Hey everyone, how's it going? I'm Corey. Thanks for joining me. Tonight we're going to do another Wednesday live stream and do some rust coding like normal. We're going to do a hotly requested topic. We're getting back to the CDN and we're going to work on part two of our CDN that we started last week. So let's go ahead and jump right in. Hello Eclipse Chat 11. Welcome to the channel. How can I assist you today? As you can see, we also have our Byte bot running in the background. We worked on that on our most recent stream. If uh, you come over to Twitch chat, you can interact with Byte. And uh, if you hang out, you might get welcomed. So it's a good time. Hey there. That's awesome to hear that you have a Byte bot running in the background. I can definitely help you interact with it in Twitch chat. Just let me know how I can assist you with your Byte bot or if you have any questions about it. So that's a little funny. Byte didn't know uh, that they were the bot I was talking about. Um, and it might have picked up on me saying their name again. Because um, it will do that as we get going here. Um, okay, but to remind ourselves what we were working on before, let's get these two things run over here. So on my right side, I'm running a slow server as a demo. And on our left, we have cache, our proxying CDN. So let's actually pull up our slow server. And it's bound to port 3000. And cache is running on port 3001. Welcome, Perfect. Zero one Ella. How can I assist you today? So we can head over to localhost 3000, and here's our sample slow app. Um, the root is the only thing that responds fast, but we have these two routes that will respond slow. Fast will take one second, and slow will take five. Do, 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 do. There we go. Awesome. Um, so that's if we hit it directly at port 3000. But if we head over to localhost 3001, oh, I forgot. We have to do this um, a special way. Do I have, I bet I have this DNS entry still. Uh, we have to set up a, a domain for this. So I set up slow.coryja.test locally um, to point back to this. And then I need to set the port to 3001 so that my server can find it. And there we go go so now we have a proxied app where this actually first click to slow will probably Welcome, be slow kata how can i assist four, you today two three four five thanks for stopping by stream everybody hope you enjoy yep so that one was, took five seconds it was actually slow oh, but now if we do slow again boom instant result and you can see that it was well it's still the same minute now or no it moved over we're at 10 now it's 11. Um, so you can see that we got the cached result. And if we go to fast, it'll actually take a second. Um, but we'll get the new updated time. And that is where we're at right now, I believe. We got it caching these responses. Um, but we don't do... Um, there's no cache headers. We're not looking at any of the headers yet. I think maybe that's what we will tackle today. Uh, making sure we actually cache the right things. Um, right now we're just caching everything. Or at least every get. We'll look at the code in a second. Um, and we definitely only want to cache things that have been, that we've, that were opted into Welcome, caching. Welcome, Drapsnook. How can I assist you today? Thanks for stopping by, everybody. Um, so here's what we're going to do um, for the, con the, the cache control header. So um, if we, it's all going to be set by basically the cache control headers. That's how caching is usually done in these kind of CDN proxies. And we're going to lean into that as well. Um, if you pass us no cache, we're going to not cache it at all. Um, and if you set a max age, we're going to respect it. So if you say an hour, we'll cache it for an hour. And if it's not set, we're going to not cache the data. And so I think we're going to work on these today. Um, the next up after that would be deploying this in multiple um, regions or multiple like deployments and having each node share knowledge about the pages that exist in the cache. This is where I think it's really going to become move from being just like a caching proxy to like really a CDN. I mean, the terms are a little fuzzy, right? But once someone, once we know how to share the data between our nodes and make sure it's like prefetched for everyone in every region, that's when it really is going to feel like a CDN, I think. Um, so we really are already doing this first point. We're going to use the file system to cache the content. Um, we're going to do SQLite, but I think we're probably going to get to that when we do the sharing down here. So for now, we're just going to worry about these cache control headers, I think. Um, so if we want to respect cache control headers, let's actually start by adding some to the slow server, probably. 
Because right now we have slow server that uh, knows how to render this template with either the title slow or fast. And then we just wait a certain amount of time. The other thing that I think we want these to do, and I think it's fine to do it in the template because it's just going to be what we return here, is we want to set some headers. Um, so I think I'm actually just going to make this return something that impulse into response. Um, because I don't actually care what type it is, I just want to have a response. Um, and these are already doing exactly that. I, I included it, so I don't need to have the full paths. And uh, let's add some headers. I almost always need to Google exactly how to do this, but I'm going to try to do it by myself. Um, headers is a header map. Perfect. Uh, this is probably going to be mutable. Uh, where else can I get header map? I could get it from HTTP. Yeah. Axum re-exports HTTP, which makes sense. Headers dot insert cache control max h Wow, that was perfect. So this is going to cache it for five seconds, I think. Let's up this to like 60 seconds. Um, and then can I just return a tuple of headers and then response? looks like I can. Oh, except this isn't where I wanted to do most of this. Oops. I wanted all of this to happen in here. Um, let template equals this. Um, and then headers is this and template. Perfect. This is just, it's just now like I don't need, I already did this inside the method. Oh, because I want both of these endpoints to do it. I want slow and fast to both return the same header. Okay, so let's go. We're going to hit directly the service now, so we're not going to go through our caching proxy at the moment. And... Oh, this one should not have any cache headers. But let's check. Headers. Response headers. We just have a content length, content type, and date, and that's it. We check out fast. It will take a second. But we will get, hey, cache control, max age 60. Love it. And slow. We have to wait five seconds for the response to come back. Max age 60. Love it. Okay. Um, Is there anything else that I need to make that? Um, in a request or in a response header. No cache, no store, no transform. We might want to like look at those eventually. Must read validate, validate private, public, immutable, stale. Okay, yeah, so I think max age alone is enough to get started. Ooh, and this is going to be good. Let's read through this vocabulary document quick to get some of the terms down. So HTTP cache is an implementation that holds requests and responses for reusing in subsequent requests. It can be either a shared cache or a private cache. We are building a cache. A shared cache is a cache that exists between the origin server and clients, a proxy or a CDN, and it stores a single it stores a single response and reuses it with multiple users. So developers should avoid storing personalized content to be cached in the shared cache. Hey Opus Popus, thanks for stopping by. Welcome to the stream. Let's see if you get welcomed by um, our chatbot in a few seconds, who I avoided saying the name of to not trigger. Um, okay, so we're going to make a shared cache because we're doing our, our proxy CDN. Um, there's also private caches. These are local caches or browser caches. They are personalized for a user. Um, so you can store private personalized stuff in them. Um, store, resp store responses, store a response in caches when the response is cacheable. However, the cache response is not always reused as is. Usually cache means storing a response. Not that exciting. Um, reuse is when you reuse it for another request. Revalidating is ask the origin server whether or not the stored response is still fresh. Usually the revalidation Hello, is done Lily. through a Hello Lily, welcome to the request. channel. How can I assist you today? There we go. You did get welcomed Opus and the nickname feature is working. I kind of forgot about that. That's so fun. Um, okay, I think we're good on these these 
things. Revalidating, I guess, is going to be the interesting bit and the freshness stuff, but we'll get to those later. The time since a response was generated is a criterion for other responses, fresh or stale. Yeah, okay, cool. Yeah, I am a little surprised that you uh, did end up on, on just the normal name for the nickname. <laughs> Thank you for testing with me last stream. There we go. I actually just bumped up the size of all the chats so I can read them nice and easy. And okay, so we are caching and we're setting this new header. So I think the thing that I want to do now is uh, teach cache to respect this header. So we have a temp directory somewhere. Where are we actually caching? Is this just an in-memory cache still? I kind of thought we were writing to disk, but we might not be yet. Proxy request. Get potentially cached response. Oh yeah, we're just in memory caching it. Love it. Awesome. So one thing we are going to do today, and um, probably relatively quickly, I think, is we're going to move this cache from memory to the file system. And that will help it survive reboots. We can reboot the cache and not lose the in-memory bit. Well, I'm not sure if that's like the most important, but we are going to do it. I think it'll be fun to do a, a disk-backed cache instead. Um, okay, so right now, though, get potentially cached response. We look to see if we have a cached response, and if so, we just return it. I think I'm pretty fine with that. Um, as long as oh so we are gonna need to check so i guess we do need to do some max age stuff right in our cache we're probably not gonna cache just the response we're probably gonna have to wrap it in something that has like when we cached it and things like that um so let's maybe make that struct a cached response um and it has a response it's just gonna be this whole thing yep a write-through kind of style would probably be nice for that. A write-through kind of style, writing to memory and the file system both. Oh yeah, that's fair. I like that. Um, so I was planning on using this create hot cache, hot cache. Yeah, that's what we're gonna pronounce. That's how we're gonna pronounce it, I think. Um, for the disk cache, and I definitely think it would be fun to do what you're saying, right? Like a a write-through where maybe we do write to a memory cache, like like a lazy static style thing, because it'll be nice and fast. Um, but then we do save to the file system. I don't think it does. I think this focuses on being pretty low level, but it is, does say it's high performance, so maybe it does. Let's see, does it say it caches anything? Or I guess that would be silly. The whole thing's called cache. Of course, it's gonna, gonna say that. Lockless high concurrency cache access. But I don't see, like, the word cache is just overused here. Uh, so it's it's hard to say whether they're doing it. And then also, the other thing is, I wonder if it's necessary. Because, right, like, Linux and all the operating systems will, like, use memory for file system caches. If you have extra memory and everything. So if I just don't use the memory in my program, uh, it should leave it up to the operating system to just cache the file system for me. Kind of for free. Fingers crossed, at least. Um, but anyway, let's make our cached response struct. I think that'll be good. Um, and I think I want like a cache dat. Um, cool. So I'm going to need chrono. Oh yeah, for sure. Definitely depends on the file system and whatnot. And I have no, like that, 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 that the operating system will do that caching is like one of those facts that like, you know, I know and I, I, I know a bit, but I've never, uh, well, I've never really worked in a place where I needed to test that assumption, really, right? Um, it's mostly been a, a, a thought experiment, so I don't have a ton of experience with it. Yeah, Mac OS, yeah, for sure, for sure. They, they, they cache everything. They do both directions, right? They'll write my RAM to disk whenever they feel like it, and they'll definitely use my RAM as a file system cache, too. They'll, they, they, they do that pretty well. And, like, I think Linux does a decent job at it as well but again right not from experience just from just from what i what i think i know um so let's just flip this out i think 
we can just change our in memory thing to hold the cached response instead. Um, but, uh, no, let's just do it this way. It's cached.response. Oh, do I need to tell it? No, it doesn't need to be public. We're in the same thing. Um, and then common Linux file systems like uh, XF ext4 and btrfs, I would expect that by default too. That's fair. I actually wasn't thinking that it was going to come down to the actual which file system you are running on Linux, but you're, that makes a lot of sense that it would. Um, so I guess in a lot of cases, you'd just be eliminating the extra syscalls, which aren't a big overhead for modern systems. Yeah, and if, I think, you know, if we're, we're getting to the optimizing syscall level, I kind of imagine there will be lower hanging fruit in this application to uh to look at, right? Like, we're, we have a mutex in here. I don't know. It feels like that there's got to be enough overhead involved in that, that just to, just to not be worth thinking about these on the syscall level. But maybe, maybe that's the thing to do, right? Maybe I can make this a concurrent hash instead of having it be a mutex hash map. Yes, I am not really going for cloud for cloud flare level here, right? Um, if you, I guess I could say that out loud, right? If you're watching this stream, um, this is not going to be built to be the most performant cache. It's going to be a learning experience and it'll work, but it's, it's not at all intended to be the most robust thing in the world. Um, and I think that's going to be okay. Um, okay. So now I need to actually like get my cache response. So I want to do get like a now, I think from Chrono. Um, yeah, that works for me. Response as response to cache. Yeah. So we're going to rename response to cache to be the actual type that we need. And then we'll store it in our cache. Nice and easy. Cloudflare, Cloudflare processes around 6 million requests per second on average. That's amazing. 6 million requests a second is pretty astonishing. Um, so yeah, I guess, you know, that, that's what we should shoot for, right, Opus? We're going we're gonna to see if we can get to 6 million requests a second with this, this, with this, with our CDN here. I think it's something to shoot for, right? <laughs> Yeah, I have yeah, I think like a lot of people I have mixed feelings about Cloudflare. Um agreed, right? As a as a company, they're they're, they're you know, they they have their ups and downs. They do provide a decent service, but it's annoying that we need that service and kind of because Cloudflare exists, we need Cloudflare to exist in a tautological sense kind of. Um, but you are right. They they do do some cool engineering and they kind of have to do some cool engineering because of like, you know, how huge they are. And you know they they got huge because they did the cool engineering but but it's fine and i'm just sitting here looking at this i don't even really need to mess with this we're going to use cache that in just a second here um so i think one thing that we should look for here is um i think we're going to need to add in like checking the cache here um so let's do that and i think i also yeah i did Saved myself this from before. Um, so this is, I think, what we're going to use for the cache semantics. This is basically going to tell us whether we can cache a request. And so that I don't have to deal with all of the details about all of these. So it's going to be interesting to see how exactly this ties in. And we're going to try to look at as many of the options here and like understand it as possible, because I think that will help us learn. Um, but we are gonna we are gonna go ahead and and use this from um for for the cache semantics and i think this fork is the one i want but let's find out ahead of it and behind yeah yeah this was made for this i think this one definitely looks like it's the more used one um and is it on crates that's not at all what i typed in uh, okay. Well, that one's interesting. We'll, we'll see what the actual crate is or if I'm going to get, uh, uh, get crate this. Um, but let me get to some chats quick. Um, between all of Google service, I'm curious if they do more or less than that. Minus other people's GCP instances. I feel like that's cheating. Um, 
yeah, no, so I definitely, you know, I get what you're saying about excluding the GCPs. That is cheating. I don't know. I kind of bet it's in the same ballpark. I bet it's pretty close. Um, yeah, that's weird that libs.rs is doing that to you, too. I don't know if I've used to typing in, like, a full crate name like that and not just, uh, like, a search term. Oh, and that worked. So that's weird. It must, like, if your thing isn't getting good results, maybe it just decides that that's what you want to do. Huh, that's weird. Oh, uh, so this, where does it point? Okay, so it points to this one now. Awesome. Okay, so yeah, we're going to use this. It's called HTTP cache semantics. Oh, but let's commit our cleanup. Yeah, I'm, it is weird behavior, Opus. I'm guessing that, like, yeah, well, kind of what I said, right? If if there's only a few results, it just defaults to putting me on the page, but it it's weird. I wasn't expecting it, especially because that crate was not the one I was trying to type in, so it didn't fe feel like it fit well. Um, okay, what did we do? We... Um... Yeah, I do I do like the lib.rs uh, cryptocurrency thing, um, except for the fact that I do know it has caused at least a little bit of trauma just because not everyone um, feels the same way about crypto and more just doesn't want to see libs.rs turned into a... I don't know, you know having having sides instead of just a just a search engine um but you know we can't always have nice things can we um okay so we added our cache response with a cache stat i don't even know if we're gonna end up using that but we're gonna commit it anyways add a cache control headers to our slow server um add cache control headers to our slow server and record when we cached a request in cache. Um, and Opus says, I think it's funny, but if they did anything more than that, it'd be wrong, like filtering out crates or something. Yeah, I think that's really fair, right? If it's just the message, it's, it's you know, relatively harm harmless, and I enjoy it too. But if it was worse, then it would be, you know, if it was something more, I agree with that. So let's go ahead and add in this cache semantic crate. Woohoo! Love it. Okay. So let's probably just read the docs a little bit and see how they want this to be used. The key method is before request, which checks whether the new request is compatible with the original request and whether all caching conditions are met. Okay. So it looks like before request is gonna... Let's find out. Okay, let's go to their docs. They don't link the, their docs from here. Here we go. Okay. Uh, the next action suggested by this. Okay, well, where is the actual method before request? this one okay so i need to get a cache policy yes um cache ability of an http response depends on how it was requested so both request and response are required to create the policy okay response is a timestamp when the response has been received usually in system time now Okay, okay, okay. So I'm going to need to make a cache policy, and I think that's going to be, like, here. We're going to have to pull it out. Um, we're going to pull it out of our cache in memory, and then we're going to have, we're going to, yeah. So, like, we can have a cache policy here. Let's just call it a policy. Everything is a cache something in this namespace. Um... So this is a cache policy. Yep. Um, I don't think those are the right things to pass it at all. Yeah, it's a request and a response. Um, so requests. Nope. Uh, what do we have here? Okay, so we have everything broken out. Interesting. 
So response to cash. Wait, 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 wait. HTTP response from parts. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. Uh, I can't make a policy until I've actually got the thing out of the cache. Uh, so it's this, and it's response, and then this would be. Oh, and I'm gonna need to make another another. I'm gonna need to make a request here. Um, but is this the wrong type? The trait bound is not satisfied. HTTP request. Oh, I just have these mixed up. Silly me. Response goes on this side. And now is response happy? Yeah, response is at least happy. I need to make request happy now, though, um, because request doesn't exist. I'll let request... Um, this is a good question. Um, so, like, this is already pulled apart, which is interesting. Can I just get the request as a request of bytes um and then from hello there... i'm vike your helpful stream companion how can i assist you today uh i think that was it thinking i said something i don't think i said anything to you bite um Oh. Okay. Um, headers and body, but this can just be request dot headers. Yep. And this can be re Haha, -ha, that was cool. I didn't actually know if that was gonna work. Um request dot into body. Uh, method URL. <laughs> the opus says the new keyboard I got has a volume knob and I keep playing with it. Just a nice, a nice tactile one. Is it, is it clicks or is it smooth? It's always a, it's always a good knob. Like bo both knobs are good. They each have their, their pros for sure though. Clicks. Yeah, those are those are satisfying with the, a nice clicky one. Uh, these ones on my mic here that I won't mess with while I'm streaming are the nice smooth ones. Um, I'll mess with those sometimes, but then I have to redo my mic settings and I and I get frustrated with myself. Yeah, the tact the tactileness makes it very very stimulating. I I get that for sure. Especially if it makes a little bit of a click too. Ooh, it's good. Especially on a keyboard, is a nice is it a nice mechanical clicky keyboard for all the all the tactileness? Okay, so I think we've got our policy created, and this looks like it's gonna work, right? It's still building. We're not using the policy, so that's fine. Ah, uh, okay, something is up here. Let's find out what. Expected request of bytes found method. Okay, that's yeah. Uh, what? Oh, 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 okay. Um, uh, so I thought I was already in, I didn't realize I was one level down here when I was doing get potentially cached response and I passed it all these things. Um, I think I want to. just do this i think i want to be the same or i think i want to have it be the same and i just want to get the full request here um and then we're gonna do all of this stuff ourselves let post equal oh well that'll work i wonder if that's what the extract was doing because that would be pretty cool wait what Oh, interesting. I Welcome, Eclipse Chat work. 11. How can I assist you today? Hey, thanks for stopping by, everybody. Opus said, I built my old, key old keyboard to be clicky, and it was really, really nice. Uh, and then, sorry, I, now I can't read. There we go. 
and stimulating, but the switches were like 80 GF to press down, and after like eight hours of typing, it started to hurt my hands. Oh yeah, definitely don't do you know definitely don't want that to happen, right? Especially with how much we're typing, got to make sure we're we're being we're being nice to our, our hands and wrists and all that shit. I'm gonna sell my old keyboard. I sold it for like 250, and I bought it for 130, and I bought this one for 135. Nice. This one just has factory loop linear switches, so very light. Oh yeah, that's a lot lighter. Almost yeah, just about half. Nice. I really don't like linear switches. I really like having the the that like what do they call it activation point something like that uh, whatever it is I, the linears are not my are not my favorite style um i'm actually excited i am moving soonish in a few uh like weeks or something like that um and i'm excited because i'm gonna have a more separate office and i might feel not as bad going back to my clicky blue keyboard at least some of the time um i'm using clears at the moment uh, mx brow uh, mx clears yeah um but i'm excited to maybe be able to go back to blues sometime soonish okay so i actually do want this but like why can't you just give me that oh i already have the debug handler on here oh that's fun uh the trait bound with bytes extract from request is not satisfied interesting it seems like you are encountering an issue with the trait bound for extracting bytes from a request. Can you provide more context or specific error message so I can assist you better? We can try. Uh, hey byte, how do I get a request from an Axum handler? Hey there. If you're looking to receive a request from an Axum handler, you can start by setting up an Axum server. First, you'll need to define your HTTP endpoint and the specific route you want to handle. Okay. Then, you can use the handle function to process the incoming requests. Finally, you can extract the request information and perform any necessary processing. Let me know if you need more specific guidance. That was not the most helpful thing you've ever told me, but that's okay. Um, I don't think I know our, the Holy Pandas. I don't think I know that Switch. I don't think I know many of the brands, I guess, besides the uh, the MX line. Um, and I guess there might be a few others I could that I'd recognize but don't remember. Um, but nice. Uh, yeah, those are expensive. Those are pretty expensive Switches, so, so always good to uh, find alternatives. Why can't you extract... Does this just need to be body? I don't understand what this is telling me. Oh, okay. Is that all you wanted? You're fine with that now? Um, okay. Uh, Axum extract host. I want to see what this was doing. I want to see if this was just parsing the, po the host header. Oh, actually, it was going to tell me there. Hostname is revolved through the following in order. Uh, forwarded header, X forwarded, host header. Okay, cool. Um, so you know what I actually realized I can probably do? I can call from request parts on this. So I can do let host equals a host from this. And... Oh, man, it didn't have extract. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Yes, it did. It just needed the trait. That's cool. Um, you just need request T where T is HTTP body. Oh, maybe that'll work. Yeah, that's fair. I could make yeah, that makes sense. I probably could make this generic over over a T. Um, I'm going to. Oh, wait, wait, wait. A stream of bytes used when receiving bodies, a good default HTTP body to use in many applications. Oh, OK. So this already is a specific Hi there. How can I assist you today? Yeah, I think I'm happy now, so I think I'm good. But thank you, Opus. That was a good, a good thing to look for, um, for sure. Definitely can think about making that generic. Yeah, exactly right. I, th I think I think I just got one step ahead of it, basically. Right. Th this this body just sh short steps it. Um, and then it doesn't have to be generic, which is maybe nice. We'll we'll see in a few minutes whether I end up liking that or not. Um, let URL equals like a URL URI. It's probably URI. Um, 
Oh my gosh, I forgot about this. Can I just like do extract again? I really like calling extract on it. Yeah, then what? Just fill it out for me. Haha, <laughs> love it. Do, 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 get potentially cached response. Yeah, this just uh, sends down request. Okay, yeah, and then this though needs to be, it's not of this, it's just going to be of a body. Um, oh, uh, what a, hmm, uh, skip all. We're going to skip everything for now. Okay. Okay, awesome. We're getting sh moved out of shared things eventually. I, I kind of expected that. I actually expected it much earlier, though, to be honest. Um, just clone this one up here. Uh, clone this here, or dot into owned, maybe. Yeah, clone. Um. Oh, yeah. Well, now I don't need to dereference you. Cool. Um let headers yeah cool okay so now though um yeah that makes sense right uh can i get away with passing it just a reference to the request where did i move it extracting the URI uh move occurs because as a blah 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 oh extracting the host this is what's using it okay extract is taking it this is a convenience for from request this consumes the request. Use extract parts. Extract parts? Is it like, can I just call it the same way? Can't borrow request is mutable. Okay. Wait, but is this gonna... Extract parts. This is just a convenience from, from request, but does it like actually take them off of the, the request though like why does it have to be mutable that's interesting i'm just worried that if it mutates it from the request when i go to cache it is it still gonna know its host huh i guess we'll find out Is that gonna build? Not quite yet. Uh, that's fine. I can follow your instructions there. Oh, that's not where I wanted to go though. Yeah, it already was. Okay, perfect. Where are you? you can't move out of. Ah, oh, I can't do into body. Um. Oh, okay. So this one's gonna be interesting. I might not be able to do that. Yeah, um, because body does, wait, 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 yeah, 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 uh, I don't know where you want me to do a dereference, yeah, okay, um, so this isn't, this is a struct for body, so I might want a generic now, at least a little bit, right, uh, so I think I want T, where T is an HTTP body, just copy exactly what Opus told me to do, um, and then I want it to be clonable. Any HTTP body that's clonable should now work. Uh, so close, maybe. Okay, let's get rid of the clone. What is this? Does this work? Yeah, okay, it returns a reference to T. Um... Oh, interesting. 
uh, I didn't realize I had different requests, which makes sense. I just wasn't thinking about it. I can consider dereferencing it. I don't think that's going to work, though. Can't move out of the shared reference. Yeah, that doesn't make sense. Um... Hmm, that is interesting. How do am I gonna... Because I do need the body twice, right? So, like, I do need the body to be clonable. Oh, I should probably use my T, you know, shouldn't I, right? If I'm gonna, like, make the thing generic over a T, I should probably use it. It's still not... Required for T to implement. Well, I guess I could just... Can I just tell my T to implement that? Because that would be nifty, right? Um, into request body. Into re request body. That will make this happy. Love it. Okay. Um, what if I make it not clone? Yeah. Okay. Oh, wait. Oh, because I'm calling clone. Love that. Uh, the trait from... Oh, okay. So I would need... Oh, my gosh. I would need a different wear clause. Move to wear clause. Perfect. Um... And then I could do where and a reference to T is into request body. I don't even need this to be into request body. Uh, for a uh, for all a a is into oh man I love it I actually know what I'm doing sometimes with these things for all um. For all lifetimes A, reference T implements into request body. Uh, so now this one just doesn't do it. So what are all the things that does though? Uh, request body as from an axiom body body. Request body as these things. The trait. Yep, is not satisfied. The trait from body is not implemented for request body. Following other types implement it. So is it that I can I uh, expected found? So now wait what? Oh, I see. Expected a ref. Yeah. Well, like... Hmm. This one's interesting. Because... So I think, like, I could... That's why I had bytes before, I think. Because that was just a nice type that I could do things with relatively easily it's kind of interesting to me that i can't do it of bytes the trait bound is not satisfied yeah okay well do i need I could, like, just move this up, right? But I don't think that's my issue. Expected a reference. Oh, so this actually needs a reference. I see. Uh, so I could take this, right? And, like, I can move this where clause up to this function, but I don't think that's gonna solve it.
Oh yeah, it needs to import uh, include uh, request extension. Request extension. Oh no. Uh oh, what are you generic over? The body? Okay. Uh, it needs to be send, okay. Oh my gosh, oh no. Uh, I don't know. We can do what the compiler says, but I don't really think that's right. Yeah, mm-hmm. Okay, well, it's just this one. What if we don't... Oh, okay. No. Uh, is implemented... Wait. Is implemented for... Trayvon body... Oh, okay. Well... Um, it's like... Request of T must implement these things. Oh, at least some of these things. At least this one. Yeah, okay, well, what if this doesn't need that? Uh, the trait bound... The trait bound request body from reference to T is not satisfied. Oh, uh, required for reference to T to implement into request body. Uh, consider, in, consider extending the where clause, but there might be a better way to express this. Um, well, let's add it to our where clause. Oh man, I thought I copied that. That's unfortunate. Uh, this to my where clause. Uh, or every lifetime A. I'm just going to copy it to this one. I'm just like doing a bunch of uh, compiler chasing and seeing if we can figure anything out here. The answer is we, we, we can't so far. <laughs> um, oh, debug handler doesn't support generic functions. That's fine, but unfortunate. Uh, the trait bound, that is not satisfying. Uh, the following other types implement to it. Okay, so yeah, the, these types are all, all messed up. Um, I don't really want this to be that. I really just want it to be a body. Uh, we don't have any generics, so we don't need any where clauses. Yeah. Okay. Um, and again, this really just wants to be a body. It could even be a bytes, but I think body's better. Um, no tea. Ooh, nice. Hope your pizza was good, Opus. We are just... Oh, we're we're mucking around. We probably have made almost no progress since you left, so you didn't miss much. Uh, basically, the problem that I'm having is I need the body twice, right? I need the body once to uh, potentially save into the cache. Wait, wait, wait. No. This can be an into body potentially oh 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 that was it wait 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 is that the only thing i needed to change and everything's working right now okay well great 
that was awesome um why was that so easy this time and like impossible before Yeah, I don't know what this extract part is. I'm not sure what I was doing here. Is this where I'm putting in the upstream? Yeah, I see. So I changed the URL right there. I don't really like doing it that way, but that's okay. Um, Client. There we go, URL to string. Yeah, so this one. What if that's not what we had there? Um, so what if we make this a mutable URL? And then we do like URL dot set. Oh, is that not a thing that I can do? We don't have. Oh, it's because I have bits over there. Uh, dot set. Uh, dot. What was I doing? Let's just read it. Um, scheme. And authority. S set scheme. Wait. So I just like these. Just once you have a URL, it's just not very mutable. But this just isn't a method. HTTP URI. That's interesting. Um, just surprising that this is just, there's no setting of anything here. You just, like, it can be built and that's it. Okay, like, not awful, but interesting for sure. Um, so this is, like, the URL. So, like, I really want this to be proxy URL. So, like... I want to basically copy this from here and do it down here more. Um, um so then this would be proxy URL. Okay, oh, and this would also be proxy. Nope, this would be the standard URL. Uh, so what if I just took this, plopped it there for that, and deleted that? Yeah, because that then makes URL still something that I can use here, and I have proxy URL, that's the changed one. I like that. I think that will do what we need well. Oh, can't find URL in this scope. Uh, sure, that's fine. URI? Let URL equals request at URI colon. Oh, and this can then just be URL. It's fine. Perfect. Uh, can't borrow request is mutable as it's already declared not mutable. Cool. Well, what if I just did request dot URI? Love it. Fine. Clone it. A uh, better question, what if it just didn't need to be cloned? Yeah, it just doesn't. Oh, uh, okay, that's a, that's a, we're not storing a reference in our cache. We do not want to deal with storing a reference in our cache right now. Oh, okay, this is the thing we got before. I see, we're just coming full circle to it now.
Okay. Yeah, so I can't call... Wait, wait, wait. Oh. I already have it. It's it's already up there. Yay. Because I already cloned it, so I didn't need the reference. Okay, cargo run. Is this cache still functional, or did I just break it? Let's find out. This is hitting everything through the cache. Does seem to be still working. One, two, three, four, five. Render. Okay, there we go. But now if we refresh, the timestamp will not change. Yay, and it refreshes immediately. Love that. Okay, so we haven't broken anything. It still functions. Um, and But now we have this policy here, so we can actually, like check if it should be policy dot before request I have to pass it in again I already passed you in the request I'm a little confused about how I'm supposed to use this like I can pass it another request but also like why Uh, like this is fine but like that's just i feel like i'm doing something wrong because that's so silly why would i ask you the same request twice in a row like that um but before request is going to return this thing and it's going to tell me a few things that i can do Good news, you can use it. You can use it with body from the cache. No need to contact the server. Cool. Send this request to the server. It has added revalidation headers when appropriate. Oh, cool. If false request was from uh, some other resource that isn't semantically the same as previously cached request plus response. Um, okay. And I think it told me that there was something else I can just do. Oh, this is just wrong. This says that it returns true or false, but it doesn't. It re returns this thing. That's okay, though. That's better. Um, okay, so if there's some cached response, we try it. Yep. So then this is like hand cache, kind of. So if we match on whether we can cache, um, and we fill that, fill the arms. What don't where? You're mad because there's no semicolon there, so you won't let me. I know those aren't. That's why you're you're supposed to be doing this for me. What's going on, Rust Analyzer? Your whole job here is to fill in these these branches for me. Yeah, you're supposed to be doing a lot more of your of your of your job here, uh, Rust Analyzer. Okay, Rust Analyzer, you was enough that I wanted to close VS Code there because uh, I just like it when my editor does stuff for me. I don't want to have to type out this whole match statement. It really doesn't want to do this for me, which is kind of crazy. Yep. Perfect. What? Oh, okay. It just didn't have that. Uh, expected tuple struct or tuple variant. 
What? Uh oh. Something like that. Only two of them? Only two of them. Okay. Um. Oh, that does that already. That can just be a cash miss and I just keep rolling. Cool. Cash hit or blank but stale. Well, I don't even wait, but like those are the only two options. Huh. That's a little interesting. Or it may require to be refreshed first. Either way, the new request headers will still be updated if sending it to the origin server. So is this thing supposed to be my original request? Cache ability of an HTTP response depends on how it was requested. So both the request and response. So I think this is supposed to be... So I need to have in my cache the request as well. So cached response here also needs to have a request. Not going to be able to clone it. Uh, and I can't. I've already it's already gone I already got the body out of the request so I can't have the request anymore I probably can't even do anything with the request anymore yeah I know this is just mismatch types okay um yeah I gave request to into body here though so I definitely do not have it to call so this is where that the problem that I was having a second ago comes into play where I need to be able to call clone on my body. But I can't call clone on this body because this body doesn't implement clone. Uh, so to read the full body, use two bytes or body aggregate. Hmm. What if this is a bite? Let bytes equals request dot into bytes, or is it body dot into bytes? It told me up here what it told me what I needed to do. Body two bytes. Oh, it's a method. Got it. Let bytes. Um, I'm actually surprised that our, our, our helpful little bot hasn't uh, heard what we were saying all the time and gone crazy. Uh, cargo add hyper. We're going to depend on hyper directly, apparently. Did that work? No. Oh, because uh, I didn't write add. Cool. Uh, hmm. Really thought that would. Oh, it needs to be immutable. I can give it a mutable reference to body. But that doesn't help. Two bytes takes a body that is an HTTP body. Hmm. So this could be an into body, but that doesn't help me. Um, so is this a different, like, I guess I could do let request tick cache request builder. Do I have a request builder? It's a request builder 
from requests, not from anything else, but maybe that's fine. Request builder new is private. From parts, client and request. Wait, from parts. The from parts takes a whole request. Assemble a builder starting from an existing client and a request. What if I don't have an existing request? Hey, Tobs, how's it going? Hi. Well, more than happily drink some water. Thank you for the reminder and keeping me healthy. How's it going, Tobs? Nice to see you. I am just lost in the plethora of HTTP crates here um, and trying to figure out how we can freaking just clone the body of some requests here. Good to hear it's going well. So request builder just doesn't even like do anything helpful for me. I can't even call new on it, which is kind of absurd. Um, also, this new method is, is, is also crazy. But if I wouldn't need a request builder if I already had a request. That feels a little silly. Um, I can find a client. Like, that's fine. I, I can get a client. Um, but, like, I don't have a request. So maybe the request builder. I probably don't want a request builder from this thing. That doesn't seem right. Uh, Rust HTTP request. Let's just look up this this struct. Uh, okay, that's what we're gonna want. Thank you. There we go. We want the request builder from the HTTP crate. Uh, so request to cache. Is that that? Okay, okay, that's better. Oh, into body gets rid of it. Yep. Where's into body? That. Can I just do you before it? Yes. Oh. This just needs to be bites. Okay, this can be the clone one, and this one down here doesn't need to be. Okay. Oh, well, I already added that. That'll, that's fine, though. Okay, that compiled. Okay, that is awesome. So now we should be able to see whether the thing thinks we can cache it or not. Cargo run. So I think... Ideally, we can hit one of these, see it say yes, cache, and then wait six, 60 seconds and see it say no, don't cache. Oh, but actually, make this just a tiny bit easier for ourselves. Let's make this five seconds. Um, oh, there's also something that's not right here yet, and that was the whole point that I put the request in the cached thingy. Um, I'm pretty sure here, I think this isn't this request. I think it's cached.request. Um, I think I need to give it the old one and its response so that it, then this can be the new one. Like I don't think it makes sense to pass it twice. Okay, we got both things running. Let's do, 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 do. This is the thing I want. Let's move it up so I can keep it up here. Perfect. Let's go to the root just to do that first. 
Still working. Okay, and it is 818. Get the time. What, 80? Uh, okay, so what we 18 is the important thing here. Um, refresh, got the cached. Oh, and we got a new one then. Wait, did I ever get the cached? Let's find out. Um, cache hit, but stale. Cache hit, but stale. Cache hit, but stale. Cache hit, but stale. So it's now one. Yeah, it's now never actually getting cached. So that'll be really interesting to figure out why. Cash hit, but stale. Cash hit, but stale. Cool. So why does it think everything is stale now? And that's all of the magic of um, this thing. Uh, so what does it have inside? I don't even remember. It's got a request. Oh, so this is the thing with revalidation headers. Um, and then matches. So what if it's just like, I guess I just want to see the matches boolean. I guess we'll look at this too. Um, but stale. And then I guess I just want to... Can I just do matches and request? Just send these to tracing. Uh, I never... No, it's definitely this one because that those format things go after. Um, but these probably aren't displayable. Um... Tracing attribute debug. How do I do that? It's it's just like a little thing you add before or after it, but I can never remember. Do I need to do the full thing? I thought there was a shorthand to not um, include that. Reporting fields. A question mark. Okay. Um, but I might need to do matches equals question mark matches. Um, and actually, is it question mark equals? No, it's this way. Um, and then request equals question mark request. Okay, perfect. Turn it back on and let's see why it's not getting cached. Okay, so that one shouldn't have been cast. We, 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 we just didn't have anything to, to look at. That one matches false. Yeah, so it just doesn't think it matches, which I'm really curious to figure out if it has to do with this freaking extract parts up here. Uh, debug request. Uh, and then after we do that, let's debug it again because I think it's going to change. I'm really worried that this extract parts is somehow changing the headers or something because like it kind of claims it could. Uh, there we go. Wait, no, that didn't have the new thing that I just added, did it? It did not appear so. One, two, two. Okay. But I don't even see the debug. Headers. And oh. No, no, no. No, no, no. Yeah, are the headers going to be different? because of something that I did. What do we actually cache? Hey, Exxon47, how's it going? Thanks for stopping by. We are working on our Rust CDN today. It's called Cache. And uh, we are working on figuring out why a response that was cached before is now not cached when we check the cache policy of it. I'm glad you're doing good. Um, okay, so here is the request to cache. URL. What URL are you? No, that's the real URL because we don't change that here, right? Proxy request. Well, it does do this. This is the thing. Why am I not seeing these? Um... 
request.uri. Wait, is that what I'm doing? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I didn't want request.uri. Um, I think I probably want headers, if anything. Uh, can I just do headers? Uh, of course I can. Let's just do headers. What are you making? Sorry, I missed that a second ago. So we are working on a Rust uh, caching proxy CDN thing. Um, so I had some requests on YouTube to make a video on making a CDN. And so that's what we are doing. It um, On the right hand side, I have an example slow server. And on the left here is the logs from our caching CDN. Um, and if I go to localhost 3000, this is directly to our slow app. Um, but if I go to slow.coryja.test port 3001, that's through our uh, proxy caching CDN. And so right now, I'm trying to figure out why it's actually not caching. Um, it was before, and then I added this thing that actually like checks the cache headers a bit better to make sure we should be caching. And now it's always reporting that we should not be caching. And I'm trying to figure out what is going on there. My thought was that... The headers might have changed. They do not seem like they did. Um, so my thought, the reason I thought the headers might have changed is because I call extract parts here and on a mutable request. And I was worried that something changed before and after. And my thought was maybe it was the headers. Um, that doesn't seem to be the case because these headers look pretty identical on the top and bottom. And it wouldn't have made sense for that to change. Um, but it doesn't tell me why matches is false. It just is like, yeah, it just is. Um, and it gives me a new request parts. But that doesn't have any extra information in it. Like it says, it might. Um, so we're using this cache policy crate. And it says somewhere that, there we go, send this request to the server. It has added revalidation headers when appropriate. So this doesn't have that. Um, and it's also getting matches false. So I guess really what I need to do here is just dive into the source of this. So what are you actually checking in before request? Um, read validation allowed via head. So request matches. Um, and that's probably not public, right? So I can't call that. Yeah. Okay. Well, that's going to be annoying to debug a little bit, but that's okay. Um, the presented effective request URI and that of the stored request match. So we want to make sure that the host header matches. So actually, where, when do you, what is matches? What is, what would make matches be false? Oh, matches. If it matches. Okay. So else, if else. Oh, perfect. Okay. So this is what's happening. So we're getting to matches false. So it's request matches. It's this method. So is same URI, the host header matches and very matches. For name in get all comma, the very header field means always fail to match. Yeah, so if you don't have a very header, cache very header, if you don't have a very header, describes the part of the request message aside from the method and URL that influence the content of the response that occurs. And most often, this is used to create a cache key when content negotiation is in use. Yeah, so it lists headers that could be influenced in this. So if I leave it blank, I'm saying there are no new cache key headers. So everything should be cacheable. Which makes perfect sense to me. <laughs> um, but it's not what my code is doing. Where was I though? I was in the docs. I had a nice doc link I felt like, and now it's just gone. Okay. We'll get back to the API reference. That's okay. Um, so before request is this method on policy. 
these are the other public methods. I don't have a lot of them. Value of the age header. Oh, well, that's interesting. Um, how, what do you do from here? You do age header value. Yeah, okay. So you get the age header. What if I don't have an age header? Uh, HTTP cache age header. Who is supposed to put the age header? Uh, contains the time in seconds the object was in a proxy cache. If it is age zero, it was probably fetched from the origin server. Otherwise, it was usually calculated as a difference between the proxy's current date and the date general header included in the HTTP request. Okay, so that makes sense. So am I supposed to put an age header in? So like, is that? Okay. I'm getting too far ahead of myself. I need to figure out if that's the reason I am not getting the result, or if it is. Oh, I, this is this is this is the other one I had open. Um, request that is same URI as self. Okay, so self URI. It already has the URI pulled out. Okay, that's interesting though. Um, so where is where we're comparing the stuff? Okay. Um, let uri matches actually uh let's do this let's debug out the cached dot request dot uri um and debug oh okay ah debug out the uh request dot uri just those two things and one and then this one should be cached but it's not the uris are definitely the same it's like that was boring um but they're the same um okay can i do like is same and get the let's just check that um uh, request dot is same uri as cache.request oh uh dot uri i see cool let's see if this is cached that one won't be this one might well, won't be but it should be true okay cool urls match next up host headers do they have the same host header? Uh, dot headers dot get head. Is this what is the key here? The host. Uh, oh, is it even a string though? Okay, it is. Request dot headers dot get get the host header host not key uh that ah. equals the other one yep yep um. Blah, blah, blah. Okay, false. Host is none and host is some. Yay, the cached one doesn't have the host header. Okay. Why does the cached one not have the host header? Request to cache. Oh, yeah, no headers. Headers mute. Dot header. Why is it single? What? It's 
consumes the builder. Why is it hard to add headers to you? I can do it one at a time, but I can't do it like that. Okay, for key value in in headers header that that this can be mutable oh wait no it doesn't need to be mutable um yeah it does need to be mutable uh because i need to do request to cache equals that um the trait bound header name from option header name yeah that's fair Wait, option header name? Why is this optional? Uh, if let some key equals key. Where's the other move of headers? 132. Uh, clone it again to put in there. There we go. Okay. So now the cache request to cache should have all the headers. This one will not be cached. This one should be. Oh. Wait. Oh, no, I don't actually know. I, I got impatient. Um, those match. Cache hit for fast but stale. Match is true. We got a match is true. Okay. Phew. Let's delete some debugging crap. Like these. Awesome. Okay, so let's crank up this time to make. Oops. Let's crank up this time to make sure that it doesn't have anything to do with that. Let's cache for a whole minute. Okay. Whoop. Okay, that was one. And it did cache. So uh hit cash for fast but stale it matches true and we gave it the parts okay so we made it farther i don't like that this doesn't have an age in it at all i think i want to add an age and i have an idea of where i could add an age well i know this is a spot i'm not sure this is the right spot um but i could add header of age um and make it zero might have to be a string nope oh because that's what's saying oh hey exxon didn't realize you stepped away but thanks for heading hopping back we uh figured out why things weren't matching and it was because the host header wasn't matching because i just didn't put it in the cache it just wasn't even something i threw in there Thanks for the follow, Exxon. I appreciate it. Um, okay, so we're now getting the matches true still. Max age zero. Why does this have a max age zero on it? That's interesting. Do I still have the headers getting dumped out somewhere? I don't want that. We got too much stuff happening. Where are my debugs? None of that. None of that. Too much stuff coming out. I think that was just another alert from the follow, so I'll say it one more time. Thanks for the follow, Exxon. We had too many alerts here, though. I think I need to figure out where they're coming from sometimes. Okay. Requested fast. Put it in the cache. Requested it again. There we go. Um, I think I might have refreshed my Twitch chat page, which is fine. Just didn't realize. Um, okay, so this is what it wants me. This is the request it wants me to make. Well, that doesn't really help me at all. Um, okay, so I guess I just need to figure out what's next here. 
because we got that it matches, right? The request head associated with the stored response allows it to be used for the percentage request. Okay. Uh, so I think that is definitely happening. Because it matches. And satisfies without revalidation. So this is what I would like, like to be hitting right now. Uh, when presented with a request, a cache must not reuse a stored response unless the presented request does not contain the no cache pragma, nor the no cache cache directive. Unless the stored response is successfully validated. I'm not really sure what that means. Uh, cache control. Cool. Uh, it doesn't have no cache. And it doesn't have pragma no cache. So that shouldn't happen. We can get the max age. Self.age now is greater than. Okay, so this just could be failing. It doesn't give me any information though. Um... And then the stored response is either fresh or allowed to be served stale. If it's stale, if no value is assigned to max stale, then the client is willing to accept a stale response of any age. Okay, yep. It doesn't have revalidate. Interesting. So self.age. Header age value. So we get the age value. Oh, okay. So if we didn't find it, unwrap or, and then, oops, okay. And then unwrap or. Yeah, okay. No, no that makes sense. So that actually means if I don't have an age, it's going to get zero. So zero. If now dot duration since duration since self dot response time okay self dot response time okay so um no 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 system now ah uh, okay this is not the right time i have a cache deck which is what i want to be using instead um because if what what's happening right now is when i go to check if it's cacheable right here um this cache policy new assumes that this is when the thing was cached so like maybe i want to cache the policy I don't really know. I, I might end up pushing the types around. But what I do know is this just has a new with options thing. And that's what I want instead. And it has response time and then this. So for response time, I want to do cached.cached app. And then this, I think, can just be defaulted. Um, and cached app wants to be a system time. So I think we're just going to do that um okay no more chrono we'll use system time um some of these things and i actually know because i'm not going to do caching each into so sorry I'm getting ahead of myself without talking. I was wondering if um, having the cache like we just did um, use system time was going to be a problem when I put multiple nodes in this CDN later. And I don't think it will because I think everything about the cache stat and the time is going to be internal to the node. So it's fine to use system time. Each node will use their own system time and they won't um, um, inter inter interact. Um, Exxon, is there a way to make the Rust compiler output assembly code? Um, it's a great question. I don't know. I don't think it's possible directly, um, but I'm not sure. I know the Go Godbolt compiler explorer. This can kind of do it in that I can write Rust code 
in this left panel and we can see what assembly it generates. Uh, so if you're just looking to like see what the assembly would be of some code, the uh, godbolt.org compiler explorer is an awesome tool for that. Um, I've used this in doing some like performance investigation kind of work to see what something will compile to, and it's it's pretty cool. I don't like know assembly that that well, so it was a little hard to read, um, but that's definitely an option if that would help you out at all. What are you uh, working on or interested in, in Exxon that you want to do Rust to assembly? Just curious. Okay, so let's see if that cached time thing was the answer to those problems we were having. That one should not be cached. This one should be. Nope, it wasn't cached. Uh, cache hit, but stale. Matches, and then we get this whole thing again. Um, Man, I thought that one might... Maybe I thought that one was going to be it, to be honest, a little bit. I thought that... Oh, I don't know what that was. Um, I thought that was going to do it. Wait, what's this time? This is a now. Okay. Okay. Yeah new with options yeah okay okay and our cached at is down here yeah once we cache it we do a system now okay so that makes sense but now i'm actually not sure why it's saying stale and this doesn't actually give me much information at all it's kind of unfortunate it just says yeah it's stale figure it out um, but I would really like to know a little more information about why it was stale. Oh, you can just emit ASM with Rust flags? That's pretty cool. Wow. You can use Cargo's... Oh, well, you could also just do Cargo Rusty to talk to Rusty directly. That's cool. I think the rust flags thing is probably better so that you can just do cargo build. Um, but I didn't know that. Oh, there's also a cargo ASM sub command, which you can run after your build to generate the assembly. That's pretty interesting. Oh, wow. This looks like a nice formatted assembly as well with like uh, annotations and stuff. Cool. That's pretty fun. I didn't know about either of those things. Thanks for teaching me something new, Exxon. <sighs> but back to why this thing is stale. Why are you stale? Oh. What if I just debug out the policy? Is there interesting things in this policy that I can look at? Let's find out if there's interesting things in this policy to look at. It looks like there could be. Okay, max age. Request max age. Okay. HTTP cache request max age. So is this saying what the max age is of a request? Request. So I guess I didn't understand max age in response directives. What are the request directives? When you have max age... Um, indicates the client allows a stored response that is generated on the origin server within n seconds, where n may be any non-negative non integer, including zero. Um, in the case above, with the response with cache control max age was generated more than three hours ago, many browsers use this directive for reloading. Max age zero is a workaround for no cache. Yeah. Okay. So I need to set a max age value 
when I'm making my request? That makes sense, but like, is it is my browser not doing that? Is my browser not doing that? So I guess I can do it, right? Like I can I can try this out. So in my wait a sec, where did it say that was? Quest. I don't control that at all. That comes from my browser. Oh no, but this is the cached request. So I can, because I, I, I control the cached request. It's this. So I can add a max age header. Like, I don't really want to add a max age header here, to be honest. I-32 max. Oh. Uh, what I would want to do here is the capital max for the constant. Though I really don't want to do an I-32 max. That's just silly. Um, I just want to know if that works. It doesn't really make sense to me that I should be stamping this as the proxy, though. The browser should just set that based on user preferences or something silly like that. Oh. That. Oh, no. I just didn't actually do it. Uh, but stale. Did I not set that header correctly? No, I definitely set that header correctly. Did it get stamped over? By oh, it could have. Request, because I am refreshing the page. Oh, that would be super interesting. Does the browser just do that by default if I'm refreshing the page to make sure I don't get a cache? The request CC max age is always zero here on the policy. Age, max age, max age. Oh my gosh, it's there again. So does that mean that I'm getting a max age of zero from the browser? And if so, do I still get that if I do it this way? It does seem like I'm getting a max age of zero from the browser, but why? Uh, oh, do I just have like a disable cache directive on? No. That there's the disable cache directive. Um, but I don't even think that's about this cache, right? Like that's just about the cache over on that side. Uh request headers. Yeah, I don't set max age. Oh wait no. Cache control max age zero. Oh, now I am setting that. Oh no. Why? Uh, Chrome setting max age zero. Yeah, so it could be that I have it disabled because this thing's open. It's definitely possible. But I like don't. Cache control, no cache. Cache control, max age zero. Wait, what? Is not to be used. When you use a self-signed certificate. Wow. No, it still did it with HTTP internet. Didn't you tell me that wasn't going to happen? Oh, wait. 
I'm a little confused. This one. Yeah, max age zero. Uh, so I guess I should try Firefox, right? We should try another browser. Because there's a chance it's the browser's fault. Uh, continue. Oh, yep. Awesome. So it's just a Chrome bug. This is working. This has been working for a while. It, it gets a cache hit here. Um, it's freaking... My browser is the thing that's throwing this off here. Uh, which is silly. This is, this will still work. I don't even need to set either of those headers. Age we saw defaulted to zero in the source. Um, and the, yeah, awesome. I was just trying to work around a header that Chrome was adding, it turns out. Uh, but I didn't need to. Uh, Firefox just doesn't add it and everything works great. Uh, so I, I'm told by the internet that I haven't, I haven't confirmed this, but I'm told. Oh, what's funny is I actually added a max age zero up there that I didn't want. Huh. Um, but the browser was adding a max age to the request, which bypassed any, uh, and which bypassed the CDN that I put in front of it. So that actually does mean though. That my uh the the thing we're using that the HTTP cache semantics crate is working great right if the browser sends the max age of zero I dutifully go to the origin and get the um updated thing and there we go yeah awesome so if I do a hard refresh with shift it then does go to the server and revalidate and then it keeps this new cached value that's actually kind of an accident but it's great. If I force something through the cache with max age zero, it now updates the cache with the um, right value, um, which I didn't even mean to, but makes sense, right? Like that's the behavior I wanted. I just didn't have to code it specifically, which is pretty cool. Oof. Needed some water there. Okay. So we can read some cache control headers now. Um, we can now read the cache control headers. Uh, let's do that. Yeah. Uh, this. Um, blah, blah, blah. With this new commit, we don't always we only use the cache response if the headers say it's okay this means that we are checking that the requests um, are for the same resource They are not too old. Fail. Um, uh, we checked that's the requests are the same for the same resource. Um, this involves looking at, nope, at, no, at the very headers. Uh, yeah, let's do that. I don't wanna. Oh, cool. Yeah, no, that's a, that's a fine link. Um, I kind of just want to have this in here as a link. I don't really think I wanted that to be a markdown link. Um, that's that. Yep. Um, cool, 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 cool. Uh, we are using the HTTP cache semantics crate. For this um, since this requires the full original request in order to determine if it's cacheable we store that in memory uh, as well awesome okay
Exxon47 said, I'm very interested in extremely low-level concepts just for the sake of knowing exactly how a computer works. That is an awesome goal. I love that. Um, someone else in a, ooh, somewhere I'm in, maybe another Discord that I'm in, brought up um, this, which I haven't ever gone through, but I've heard very good things about. Do you know of NAND to Tetris, um, Exxon? This is a... Uh, book slash course slash learning materials that teaches you how to build tetris like on a computer from like like scratch scratch like from us like logic gates i think um and, and build it up from there and cover all of the low level stuff um so I, I haven't gone through it but i've heard very good things about it curious if uh you know of it or maybe have have gone through some of it Okay, so let's see. I think something that I want to do here, and we are probably going to wrap up moderately soon. We usually go for about two hour streams, and we are closing in on that now. Um, so let's probably leave ourselves a file for like where we left off. What do we want to call that? That's like the... Like just the plan.md? I can I can give I can have it be the plan.md file, I guess. Um Exxon says, I have not gone through it, but I've heard of it. Yeah, me too. I think I'd like to eventually. Um It would be I think it would be a fun learning, a fun thing to learn at some point for sure. Uh so let's 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 write ourselves some next steps. Um and actually let's do recently implemented. Uh what did I do last time? That's what we're gonna do. What did I do last time on this stream we uh, got started looking at the cache control headers previously we cached the response uh, response no matter what uh, but But now we um, can use the cache control header to determine if we should cache the response or not. Um, we opted to use the HTTP cache semantics crate to parse the cache control header for us um, instead of implementing it ourselves. Um, we learned that Chrome was sending a max age zero header which was forcing our cdn to always refetch from the origin note use firefox for future testing Um, it is hard to find the official Intel docs for their x86 architecture. Luckily, AMD does have docs for AMD64, which is the same thing. Oh, wow. I'm actually, I didn't know that. You know, I definitely don't, I'm, I'm, well, I'm a web developer by training in Ruby and Rails. So, you know, from the opposite end of the stack a little bit there. Um, but I didn't, what, I'm surprised that Intel doesn't, um, have better docs for their, um, you know, for for the assembly stuff there. That's nice that AMD does, but I would have guessed that Intel did. I just don't think I, I'm not, not in that world enough to know that. Super interesting. Um, no, we already have all the cache control stuff. So what do we think we want to do next? Um, we're, I think the one thing we want to wire up is a cache to the file system instead of holding everything in memory um add a slash admin slash cache endpoint to see what is in the cache yep that's going to be important for when we get multi-node because then i'm going to use that to inspect and see if it's working um this will be important for debugging um especially when we get multi-node 
multi-node. Um, cool. I don't think I need to flush the cache. That, that's cool, but it's fine. Um, add a SQLite DB to store the cache metadata. Um, this will be what we share between nodes. So it should be a manifest of the pages to cache. Um, if we get a request for a new uh, a page that is not in the DB, we should fetch it from the origin and add it to the DB. Perfect. Um, add, oh man, what is it? It's the, um, um, distributed SQLite from fly light FS. Um, uh, to, uh, to share the SQL lights DB between nodes. Uh, this will be the source of truth for the manifest. We'll use this to determine if we should... No, that's not true. Uh, oh no! I'm sorry you got an ad there in the middle, Exxon. Um, that's unfortunate. Uh, hopefully I'm back now and you can hear me again. Um, but I didn't specifically click the run and add button, so that must have been something on Twitch's side, unfortunately. Um, but luckily I hadn't read, uh, your chat, so let's do that now. Um, they separate into five volumes. Oh man, volume one, application programming, volume two, system programming, volume three, general purpose and system instructions. Four is 128 and 5... 56 bit media instructions and volume 5 is 64 bit media and x87 floating point instructions oh man yeah that's a lot of volumes um yeah that's fair that's a lot um glad the amd ones are better but yeah i'm, I'm surprised and there's just so much in assembly in that whole world that i don't know about um i didn't even know x87 was a thing at all i don't i don't even think i uh have heard of that before yeah that's what i want i like that last message there um copilot thank you for that 3336 pages for all the volumes yeah that's not a very uh, readable uh little thing is it that's a that's a little bit of a beast and i imagine those volumes are pretty uh they don't they don't overlap much right it feels like they probably don't add a plan so i know what to do next time i like that it's always good to have a plan for next time as well get this pushed up awesome okay so i think with that we are gonna start wrapping up here so to go over what we worked on today, we were working on cache, our CDN caching proxy in Rust. And so before we had something that was working as a caching proxy, but it kind of just always cached. No matter what, it would always save the response to our in-memory cache. And the next time someone requested it, it would always use that response. So it didn't respect the max age header. It didn't respect any of the cache control headers. And that's what we implemented today. We got the HTTP cache semantics, cache semantics crate added in, and that's doing a lot of the heavy lifting of checking the headers and making sure our requests are actually cacheable before we return them to new users. Um, and we also learned a really fun thing about Chrome. Chrome, at least in my mode with developer console open and stuff was always sending max age of zero which was forcing our cdn to like not ever cache the thing once we got the header checks in so we will use firefox for future testing to make sure stuff is working um and so yeah everything was working with getting the headers read really well and then we wrapped up by adding some next steps for next time um i'm gonna make my markdown linter happy 
by oh my gosh it really wants there to be a top level one at the top but then there can't have two single headers okay there we go i think i got that markdown file happy fix markdown okay and um exxon in chat is saying 8087 is the name of the original floating point processor also called a coprocessor the newer x87 is now built into the cpu oh okay okay see so i knew a little bit of those words right like i knew that i knew of the concept coprocessor or maybe just the word to be honest um but that makes sense i guess i didn't realize that it was about floating point arithmetic and stuff like that um that's really cool though that's really awesome i am learning so much thanks for hanging out exxon um, and with that, I think we are going to get out of here, but I do want to see if I can get my chat bot here to, to wrap us up here. Um, hey, Byte, you want to do a stream wrap up for us? Oh, no. We ought to, we ran into an error at some point and Byte hasn't been running for a little while. Let's boot up Byte. Um, we're probably going to get a bunch of welcome messages, but I do want to see if they'll do a wrap up for us because it was really fun last time. Oh, they're going to hear me say something. Sorry, I didn't quite catch that. Could you please clarify what you would like me to do? Yeah, Bite, please give a good stream wrap up for us. Hmm, I don't think it caught that time either. Hey, Bite, give us a good stream wrap up to end chat. Hey there, sure, I'd be happy to give you a stream wrap up. It sounds like you had a bit of difficulty with the recording, but no worries, I'm here to help. To wrap up the stream, I'd say it was great hanging out with you today. We covered various topics and had some entertaining moments. Thanks for joining me, and feel free to come back anytime for more fun-filled streams. I like it, what Byte said. Um, I really did have a lot of fun today. Thank you all for coming out and hanging out with me. Um, and I'm really enjoying this CDN uh, topic here. And uh, Welcome, oh. Exxon47. Oh, okay. How can I assist you today? I'm glad to hear that you had a lot of fun today. It's always great to spend time doing things we enjoy. You're welcome, and I'm here to chat whenever you want. Whoa. Uh, I just got a seg fault. I haven't got a seg fault in safe rust on OSX in a while. So that's a fun one. Um... But it did do a good stream wrap up before um, it blew itself up. So <laughs> thank you everyone for coming out and uh, hanging out with me today. What I was going to say before Byte interrupted me by introducing everyone again was um, the topic for working on a CDN in Rust came from viewers like you in the in YouTube comments. So if you have a interesting topic that you'd like to see me cover, please do let me know. You can leave a comment on YouTube or find me anywhere. You can come over to my Discord and chat with me there if you want. You can find the link to that in my GitHub profile and my Twitch profile and my YouTube profile, any of the profiles, and you can find the links. Um, and with that, I think we're going to wrap up for the evening. Thank you so much, team, for coming out, and I will talk to everyone here soon. Thanks. Have a good one. Bye, team.